a question. If you have an awkward question for the artist, <laughs> fill out this form. I should have started this like at the beginning of the show and we would have had a stack yeah, of them. Yeah, it's just as well we did. And we could have just ripped through them all day. So there's some of these, but you guys are also welcome to, to get into it. Um, you guys all seen his work before, I assume? Fans? Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, this is about... <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Nice show. This is about two years of work. As last yeah, solo show with us was about two years two ago. Years ago yeah. So this is kind of what two years of art making looked like for yeah. David Fullerton. Um, no particular, most, like, David doesn't necessarily do a theme show around, hey, I'm doing this right now. It's kind of like, this is a snapshot of time in a way, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, well, that's kind of why it's hard to do, like, a talk, because... Yeah. It's not like I'm sitting down thinking I'm going to do a show and this is what the theme is going to be and it's going to be about this. Draft. It's just kind of like an ongoing process, which makes it hard to like sit down and go like, oh, this is what it's all about. It's just a kind of bunch of stuff that comes out over the course of two years. Yeah. So I mean, it's hard for me to know what you guys want to know, which is why we're doing a and a It's more just like yeah. you tell me what you want to know and I'll That was our first question to, we wrote down. Like, right. Why are we doing a lame question and answer <laughs> thing instead of a proper artist? Right, right. and actually the answer is because like, I don't know. I mean, just, I've been doing this here. for a long time and it's, I, it's oh, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot of the time when I say stuff, but obviously you guys haven't heard that. Yeah, so, you don't know that. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, and, it's, and it's also just because mm. I don't know, there's not like a, like I said, it's not like, a, I'm not sitting down thinking like, here's a show and it's about this. It's just like, this is an ongoing reaction to life and this mm. is what it is exactly. in the world, so. Ongoing yeah. reaction, it's a good point though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, you know, as we were talking about this the other day. Uh, right. As you, um, you see things in your daily life, we all have different ways of processing them, right? We think about it, maybe, we, maybe writers write about it. Artists might, uh, artists might do thing, art indirectly relating to something, but Yours is um, you're you're relating to experiences and maybe climates of political climates and things like that through different characters, okay, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess it's not like yeah, because I, it's not really like it is kind of characters. It's not it's, it's not me. This is not my voice. I mean, it is my voice, but it's not like I am kind of going in. When I do a piece, it's like a character. It is like a kind of character. It's kind of like. It's almost like uh, like a segment of a short story or something that you come into and it's like you don't really know what's going on before or afterwards but you're kind of dropped into that idea. Mm -hmm. and so it's like it's not really me who's writing those things which I think people sometimes think it is but it's not. It's like it's the imaginary voices in my head. <laughs> For want of a better kind expression. Of like a novelist, maybe writing a novel. Sort of. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, I've never. I don't really enjoy writing that much. So they're all really like they're kind of short. Enjoy writing. Writing. I don't. I never liked really? writing very much. No. Really? Yes. Like more than just what's in your piece. Yeah, I've always liked drawing, but I like. I mean, I I, I like using words, uh -huh. but I'm not interested in like doing a big long novel. Yeah. The Fullerton novel. Right. It's this not in the works. This is about my attention span. So <laughs> yeah, like, it's a couple like of paragraphs and we're done. Yeah. Yeah, but I like the idea of that actually being suggestive of a bigger story too. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the idea of like uh, here's a small segment of something, and you use your own imagination to fill in the rest of it too. Is um, any of this autobiographical because of that? In that way, <laughs> I mean, it's all autobiographical, but it's also not autobiographical. Uh -huh. It's not like this is me getting my feeling. Well, it kind of is, but it's not like oh, this is me getting my feelings out. I mean, it's kind of obviously sarcastic and dark and it's yeah, that's it makes me feel good to get that off my chest it's yeah. not really autobiographical in that way it's not like about me and my life but it's about my reaction to mm. where I am in my life yeah and I use and it's also like using somebody else's voice to get that off my chest too. yeah right I, I, does that make I sense feel you, sure. instead right. of you know like opening up and like here yeah. I am and right you know you can indirectly yeah and it's kind of like using humor it's easier to be rude and sarcastic about things because people are less offended generally. <laughs> I don't know. Is, um, speaking of autobiographical, is that glass cow piece over yeah, that the left corner? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not. Well, I've just... never been put in a box by hooligans. But <laughs> I mean, it's the humor of that is definitely, is definitely a kind of Scottish humor and the idea of um, 
like the Glasgow thing, if, you, if you're from Glasgow, it's okay for you to put down Glasgow. If you're not from Glasgow and somebody else does it, you get really pissed off about it. So really? there's, there is that kind of humour in there, but like, it's okay for me to say Glasgow's shit. Yeah. But if somebody else does it, it would be, exactly I wouldn't be happy about it. Yeah. So there is that, and it's definitely a kind of, that kind of dark Scottish humour is definitely a big is that part the general of the stuff. on people that live in Glasgow? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're really proud. They love it. They're proud of it. They love it. But you make fun of it the same time. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Because it's a pretty grim place. Sure. It's yeah. pretty grim. <laughs> Have you guys read that piece? Can you read it? Do you remember no. what it says? No, I can't remember. <laughs> Here, I'll read it. It's too long. Um, I left Glasgow to seek a better life, but was abducted by hooligans who have kept me inside this box ever since. Things could be worse, however. I have grown used to the confines of my box, and in many ways, it is better than Glasgow. That's <laughs> <laughs> just hard, you know? Yeah. It's, it's not even funny. Have you been to Glasgow? Glasgow? <laughs> 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 well, we're laughing. Yeah, oh, yeah. there you go. See, you're That's laughing. Exactly, so, yeah. exactly. We're uncomfortable. Right. Yeah, or yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Because we don't want, you know, people yeah. who live in Glasgow to be offended. That's right. right. Cool. Well, what's going on with those four canvases? This is kind of a different format. David often works with um, right. collage, found paper, old office materials. This yeah. is a straight up canvas. What's I mean, these just don't that? have any. These ones have like the detailed drawings and stuff in them. I think these ones were. <laughs> these ones actually came about because my son was painting stuff. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, He's much more uh, uptight about stuff than I am when it comes to that stuff. So he'd like paint on the paintings and he'd get really pissed off with them because they were like too lumpy or something. So then he'd like be done with the canvas and he didn't want to redo them. So I just took his old canvases and then I was like covering them with white paint just to get them done. And then that happened towards the end. I was getting near the end of preparing for the show and I was just like, it was fun to just do something really fast mm -hmm. and just like use words, get it out of the way. Because mm -hmm. uh, these took a long time and there's a lot of like fiddly drawing and stuff like that. And it was really kind of liberating to just kind of do something quick that was like just words and kind of like, it looks kind of messy, but it's like, it was really fun to do. And it was kind of like just getting ideas out quickly mm -hmm. and just like slapping them down. Mm -hmm. And I really, I was kind of pleased with the way they came out to be honest too. Which, so yeah. that was where they, they came from. So they're almost like smaller elements. Yeah, bigger pieces. I guess so. And it just I, sometimes I get frustrated with myself because I spend so long on the drawings, and I don't really. I, don't, I enjoy doing the drawings, but sometimes I get like because they're so detailed, and mm -hmm. I, I, I get sort of frustrated. That, like, mm -hmm. Why can't I just do something quick and fast? And, uh -huh. uh, so those were. That's you get expressive. That. On those yeah. Pieces. Right. Yeah, expressive. More Probably, yeah. yeah. It was fun to do, yeah. So there's, your son's paintings are underlying right. your paintings. Right. He's got a whole bunch in his bedroom now, kind of so I'll go and grab them. Yeah, it's kind of collaboration. <laughs> I'll check that they're... That's they're good. Well, he breaks down the white canvas for you. Right. And it actually right. really helps, I think, yeah. in a lot of ways to not have like a virgin canvas. It's already messed up, so you're just like, right. I mean, some of them I took the sander to them and just like, kind of got them done, <laughs> which is good. Cool. So that helped. So what happened with the wall, maybe? Yeah, that was your idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could do some tips. I know how to paint. Yeah. 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 You got skills? It was finished. Yeah. I couldn't finish I, it. it was, I gave him a roller. It was late in the day. <laughs> that's, we're pointing at each other. But, yeah, that's yeah. where we yeah. ended up. You know, then he just split out the door yeah, to beat works. traffic to San Francisco. <laughs> you know, he lives in the city, so he's got to leave at a certain That's time. right. Yeah. I have to get back. <laughs> yeah. It was as much as I could get. <laughs> <Or he> gets, <laughs> that's what happened there. <laughs> Uh, okay, oh. what about that really big canvas on the other side of the wall? Right. It's a big piece. Did that you guys all get a chance to piece. take in the really big piece? I know you yeah. mentioned that was, it's a couple years and Yeah, that progress, one was kind right? of, uh, like after the last show, I was kind of like, I just felt a little bit lost. Like sometimes when, I don't feel like that this time, but the last time you're just, you finish something and you're like, okay, what am I going to do? Sometimes you feel like I can experiment and do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're just like, I'm kind of stuck. And I was pretty much stuck the last time. So I thought, <laughs> it seems like the most obvious thing to do is choose the biggest canvas I've ever done. <laughs> Make that a challenge. So, so I kind of, yeah, <clears throat> so that was, and because there's that much space on it, it kind of, I felt like it didn't really matter. I could like do a bunch of stuff yeah, and if it didn't it. work out, mm -hmm. I just glue it on anyway and then put it on top of it. So that was kind of how that one came out. And that one I've been working on pretty much from then right up until. Wow. 
yeah, so it's almost two years worth of stuff. I just changed a lot, which has been good. I mean, that's a different way of like, like those were one way of like mm -hmm. easing, like getting mm -hmm. things going, and that was another way of doing it's it. Like a so side yeah, side deposit. Right, and that one became more, like, it became tighter and tighter the more uh -huh. I did it. Like uh -huh. you start out, like it doesn't matter, and then you're uh -huh. like, there's this corner here still left. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like you know, so it's it was interesting. Idea. Like yeah. as an artistic practice, you've got the things you're working on, the specific yeah. ideas, and then you can. Um, the things that don't make it onto a specific thing, they're right. almost, it's like your circular file, yeah. but it's an art piece. In right, I mean, it's just different ways of, I, it's hard to, I also find like, if you just do the same thing over and over, I find, I get frustrated because things start to look the same too. You're like, oh look, there's a face and some writing here. But I need to do something that's, it just pushes it a little bit yeah, further. Yeah. yeah. Well, with that, um, you know, if your work isn't specifically about this overarching thing, it's kind of your reaction to things over the course of the last couple of years or whatever, yeah. each specific incident. So that one, to me, when I look right. at it too, it kind of feels like, hey, this is the last two years yeah. in America. Like, right. I'm trying to, elf, you know. I mean, it's definitely, it, when they're that big and it's not just like, here's the idea and mm -hmm. here's the thing, it kind of becomes more of a big, there's more ideas going on there. I mean, I think yeah. there is a kind of theme to that one, which I'm not really going to go yeah. into, but there's yeah. sort of yeah. that yeah. whole yeah. idea of like, happiness American and, and all that. yeah and just like you know the whole self-improvement and mm -hmm. not feeling that yeah, that whole idea was definitely what was kind of it kind of turned into that uh, it didn't yeah. really start out of that but then it kind of turned into that so yeah. i mean you'd say it with a message literally with text but also with um you know there's some grumpy looking people in there <laughs> right as well, that kind of touches yeah on i mean that just kind of evolved little hints it of was, american flag you know, was, oh there's stripes yeah, stripes yeah right yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was kind of unintentional but yeah was it? Yeah, good, that was. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes the unintentional stuff you look back at and you're like, okay, that you know ends up there for a reason. A lot of that stuff mm -hmm. you kind of look back at and you're like, okay, that, I understand why that happened there, sort of. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of the stuff is very intuitive. I mean, it's not like you're sitting down planning everything. So um, a lot of it just comes together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. The. Um we're going to jump ahead to the usual questions. A bit. Okay, usual questions? Yeah, we've got the usual questions. <laughs> um, and literally, I asked someone earlier in a text, I was just chatting right. with someone, they got any questions for David? And right. they asked this. Exactly. Right question. This yeah, right. What comes first, the pictures or the words? Right. <laughs> so they both. So there's not one thing or the other. Um, like I've got these, yeah. I, I wrote these for the first time. I wrote nice things. But so these are just books full of. And they're, they're mostly words, as you can probably see. They're mostly words. There's some pictures, there's some cut out stuff, but it's mostly words. Oh, wow. So these, um, oh, there's pictures here too. Look at that. Yeah, but there are, there's a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's just some weird lines. But there's mostly, so I have like, yeah, so there's books that I have that are full of like phrases that I think wow. that will occur to me. And I'll just like keep those. Uh -huh. And then sometimes I'll think like, oh, I'll go through them and I'll think like, um, I should do, <laughs> I should find a picture that goes with this thing or find an image that goes with this phrase mm -hmm. and then that's how it starts. And sometimes I'll actually see a picture that I want to do and draw that and then I'll go through the books and find a phrase that kind of goes wow, with that. I've or, never seen this. Yeah. No, this is, I these keep are all quiet. future David Fulton. Yeah, they probably are, right? Wow. wow. Yeah. He's a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is, right? There's quite a lot of that stuff is complete rubbish. I mean, I well. can, uh, this is interesting. Can I read one? Maybe? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but seldom do we glimpse the stars that shine above the, po the pollution of our prosperity. That's a piece. That's the future. I mean, a lot of them are just like snippets of stuff that is just right there. Can I read this one? Yeah. What is that one? Uh, we are starting to unravel, and there can be little doubt that it will be the corn syrup in our diet that will be the end of us. <laughs> These are all yeah. future Yeah, so they're all like, they are probably all, uh, yeah. Should we pass it on or is that Sure, yeah, you can pass it on. Yeah. No, it's, there's nothing personal. Okay. Well, <laughs> there is, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll back to that one again. That's how we know which one. Right, no, <laughs> right. No, I'm not going to tell you. You'll find it. You'll know. These ones are older. These ones are more like, because they started out doing these with, that are more like, some of these have actually got like pretty much finished like, oh, that's stuff that's in there. Cool. So um, I used to actually have a job. 
down a lot of this. I used to have a job where I had an office. And I could like shut the door. So I spent a lot of time <laughs> I spent a lot of time doing drawings in these right. books instead of yeah, right. Instead of doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, right. Well, you can make a print of that. It says toothpick fight in underpants. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, so the, I guess the words and pictures thing, they, they both kind of go in tandem. I mean, just kinda... Wow, I could just look at this all day long. You <laughs> should publish those. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or just sell those originals. Right, right yeah. Do that. <laughs> yeah. You still need them. There's still stuff in there, haven't done. <laughs> right. Okay, back to the usual questions. Uh, who are the people in your drawings? Right, that's always a question, yeah. yeah. So, um, they come from all different places. I used to spend a lot of time on Flickr. Oh, yeah. Which was great because people upload all kinds of weird shit. To it. It's not like a, it's not like super high end photography. It's people like bung their snapshots up there, and you can find some really brilliant stuff on there. That's kind of faded away now. So I, I still have a lot of stuff that I've collected. I find stuff online, a lot of snapshots. I also, you'll see, there's like uh, from all night. Yeah, mugshots. <laughs> mugshots are really. You got that I love. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. mugshots <laughs> because people look. They just look at me. A lot of these actually are, some of these are like really old mugshots and some of them are more modern mugshots, but mugshots are great because you just get people the most amazing they faces. They sell these at liquor stores. Yeah, this Oregon. is from Oregon, right? So it, all it is, is just pages and pages of the latest mugshots, <laughs> which is just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And then in the back, you have like the hot mugshots. Like, so it's like babes and busted. <laughs> It's totally it's awesome. There you go, have a look. It's sponsored by a, like a dispensary. <laughs> right. So, I mean, those things are great because you just see the most amazing faces and the most amazing expressions. And they're not like, you know, art tends to be like a beautiful face and a beautiful thing. And it's just great to have them. Like, I'm definitely attracted to sort of weirder, just because it's more normal and more human to be like a little bit odd looking, a little bit off. And then also obviously I've done a lot of wrestling stuff too. These are like old, I think they're 70s wrestling wow. magazines, which are great. But there's wow. also just like the pictures of the wrestlers themselves are just are amazing. They're just wow. like great. So that, that, just stuff like that. But here's a, a karate one from the 70s <laughs> oh, yeah. thing he gave me, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. good. There's all, I mean, look at that guy. He's brilliant. Yeah. So there's, you know, finding stuff like that. But there's not any, like, I don't like choose people as specific people. It's not like I need somebody to be... I have done, we did a, I did a Donald Trump one at the last show. Um, was it was, specific? Oh, yeah, it was kind of a weird one, but yeah. uh, sometimes I do people who are... Is, you know, is it really just a mix and match of, of <coughs> text and images? Absolutely. Is there a case where like, you get an image and you say, I absolutely have to have the text for this, and then you actually will create something for something? Or is it really just... Yeah, I mean, that has... Because it's, it's really, there's not really one thing. It has happened like that. I've got a, or I'll have the text in the books that I, I kind of know in my head and then I'll see something and I'll be like, oh, that's, that's exactly it. And then I've seen other images. Like these, these actually, these guys came from an old 1950s like life drawing book and the poses were just so weird. You're like, I have to use... <laughs> so natural. Just, yeah, like, so there was some of that stuff that too, but... Was that from that yeah, that was from that one too, <laughs> totally, yeah. Um, so those were, I just, it's, a lot of us just like mix and match and like, you find an idea and you find the image and they kind of go, and sometimes you think they're going to work and then they don't work and you have to like start again. And yeah, so it's a process. It's just like, it is, it's kind of like what works with what. I guess it's kind of like a sort of musical thing. It's like, you know, does this work with this? this I mean, when you're finished, do you feel like, like there's a, like a resonance is having this perfect? Yeah. Or do you feel like there's a, well, some of them are better than others? Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. I think there's definitely some that are better than others. And, People do react differently to your stuff. Yeah, it on who and sometimes like the, like see the runners one. That's a very literal translation of what that is, and sometimes that bothers me that I've done something that that's literal. Because it's a group of runners. Yeah, right. right. Um, I prefer not to do that, but sometimes it's just is like that's what makes sense with the picture. I don't know. Anybody who's ever done running as a thing, right? I'm not sure it resonates with that. One. <laughs> okay, good. That's, that's a good point, though, John. Everybody that comes in that either falls in love with a piece, he maybe takes a piece home, that it all speaks to him in different ways, because each of these are little tidbits of humanity that right. resonate with people, and maybe it's the figure, or maybe it's the, what you're saying. Yeah. But some are repulsed by one, and yeah. drawn into another. I mean, you hope that it's a co the combination of the two is what creates the piece, but I definitely there's sometimes you like, 
the image is more powerful than the words of the other way around. Yeah. And then we've been working together long enough to where, you know, if we have uh, a small, small handful of pieces that we still have from past shows, there's, right. a, there's a reason, you know, it's like, Yes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That particular maybe that was a little too much. Right. That particular <laughs> it's, character. It's usually the words, though. I think it's usually like the yeah. words people react to. Sure. Like, sure. I like that picture, but I just can't. I don't want to deal with that. I just yeah. want to take it home. It's right. good. It needs to exist. But yeah. There was that one because there was the one about like what if you fulfilled your potential and nobody noticed and people got really like, Sad, yeah. ooh, yeah, yeah, they don't like that one. Yeah. Yeah. Or the photocopy genitalia. <laughs> I'm surprised that one hasn't sold. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, the um, okay, another back to the usual questions. Right. Uh, you've done work with words, but no pictures. Have you ever <laughs> done work with pictures, but no words? No, I haven't. I find I really, I don't know what it is, and it's probably like some weird uptight thing about me. But because I, I guess what it, it seems too easy to do the picture with it. I don't. Like without giving it the meaning comes from, to me the meaning comes something. from the words and I know that it's like doesn't have to be like that because I love art that doesn't have words on it but it, for me it's just I, I I can't let it go without having some kind of smart art phrase written on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question about how your words are also pictures. In other words, the visual. So right. I, I don't know a better word, so I'm going to use the word font. Right. Are those different voices in your head? Are they leading us? You know, some are formal, some are right. the opposite. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about the words is that the, the, when you do the words on the pictures, the words are actually an image as well, and that definitely affects how the... And the way that the writing is done when it's all a little bit, like, scrappy and messy is definitely plays a role in the overall image and the way that that works with sometimes really tight drawings and just it creates a certain kind of thing and then also the you know the, the words paint a picture because they're words but they are actually an image in themselves so i really i do like the way that those two things are they're two different kind of images there's the actual image of the graphic words and then there's the image that the words project as well did that make sense we like it a lot okay <laughs> good that's a good point yeah you should name your font, actually. Um, it's your, <laughs> the handwriting that you generally yeah. use, the block text, yeah. all caps. Yeah. You could, you could create a font out of that. And it exists. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's written that way for a reason, because it's just, I think it's like that kind of naivety of, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's hard to express that, but it's just like, it's definitely a kind of way of, it, to me, it's like a way of looking at things. And that, the way that's written kind of is part, the image is part of the words. We don't all see handwritten words that much anymore either. You know, yeah. There's some of that too. I love the handwritten. You know, I have really horrible sloppy writing. Yeah. Um, but um, I enjoy looking at handwritten. Or you ever get a letter from somebody, uh, maybe the older person that writes letters, and you have to respond to them. You're like, right. I have to do a whole page of like handwritten. <laughs> yeah. you know, are they going to be able to read this? Yeah. Right? And uh, it has a it's a wonderful humanity to it. You're, yeah. The way you write. Right. And using your left hand, right? No, 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 I used my right hand. <laughs> <laughs> when I broke my wrist, I used my left hand. Yeah, I remember. That, that was, it was hard to write. It was easier to draw with my left hand than write with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Well, I asked your stuff maybe in New York or Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that would be good. You'd have to ask them, not me. Have you seen it again? Nah. <laughs> maybe that's why. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> it was an easy answer after all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's obviously very illustrative, too, and it translates. Right. Great. Well, I did try and illustrate for a while, and people get really uptight about having words on it because it's like when you do an illustration, generally, you're illustrating somebody else's words. So when you do, as an illustrator, when you use words in your work, people tend to, like, mm, I don't really want to do that unless you're using their words, which was kind of like, I don't want to do that it's anyway. Like instrumental right. Versus right. It's like bands will make instrumental. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You. Um. So when you're working with the words, mm -hmm. in to like how they look for the poems, there's the layout of like basically the what we call like the poetry of like how the lines are broken out. Right. Do you mess with that first before you try to figure out how it's going to be? Yeah. Or 
I do, yeah, yeah. I mean, I worked in advertising for years, and you're, you, the line breaks are super important when you're actually putting forward an idea because it's the way people read things, and not just how they look, but it's the way things are broken up. So yeah, I definitely like trying. And sometimes I try and do it the opposite of what you want to do, like so that it isn't good. It makes it harder to read because it's like broken up in a certain sort of funky way. But yeah, definitely, that's, I definitely consider that part of it, yeah, for sure. Were you trained in like, graphic design? No, I did art and did drawing it. and painting. I went to art school to do graphic design, uh -huh. and the people who were teaching at the college I was at were just like, uh -huh. they were all in their like, 70s, and I realized it was, just, <laughs> it was a complete waste of time. Yeah. Plus, I really liked doing art. So. Did you ever do graphic design pre-computer? Like yeah, I worked in ad agencies before uh, computer stuff, and I, the guys who were in the studio would be like cutting type out and yeah. like doing all that stuff. I, I was using around it as well. My right. stepdad was a um, graphic designer, yeah. and then once computers took over and he couldn't turn back, he yeah. stopped. But this very much reminds me of layout. Right, it is, and it's yeah. like that whole like you're yeah. cutting stuff out into little squares and making sure that everything mm -hmm. is like yeah, mm -hmm. that stuff's rub down, let let yourself yeah. and all that. Inhaling spray mount constantly. Yeah, it's all yeah, so good. <laughs> cool. yeah. yeah, they're almost. Yeah, go ahead. Follow please. Question then. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So then you got your word breaks and you got your images. Did you put it down and then figure out what the box around it is after? Like horizontal, mm. vertical, square? Like, are you, you know what I mean? Yeah, sometimes. Like, I'll do all the bits <laughs> and then I'll try and figure out what size it should be and how it's going to work and then like do a sort of just everything thrown down and try and move stuff around and try and figure all that stuff out that's generally sometimes i'll just start with something that's a background and then like do it so there's not that mostly i would like do all the different little bits and then like put it down and then try and figure it out and then glue it down but quite often when i'm gluing it down i'm not i'm kind of sloppy and stuff can get messed up and then i'll have to go back and redo it so The, um, it, it seems natural that you would get into printmaking, so let's say the last few years, right. maybe four years or so, you got into printmaking, kind yeah. of letter, press, handset, typography stuff. Right. And, so, it's, uh, I mean, just using the words, obviously. Some of that makes it onto the, the painting. The letter press. But most of you, you kind of yeah. stick to the prints on those, huh? Yeah, the print, uh, it's a sort of different thing. The prints, again, are, it's nice to do something really fast and like lots of them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's really, it's more like this stuff, which is like just using words mm -hmm. and then quickly, because most of the images, I find it hard to like create, I'm not that good at printmaking that I can create images myself. I tend to like, I mean, I do lino cuts, mm -hmm. but they're pretty basic. So it's mostly about the words, the printmaking, sure. which is good. So sometimes it's good to just like come out, get a phrase from a book and just be like, yeah. right, I can make a print out of this and it's going to be super fast and just get that done. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, he's got, he's kind of constantly bringing in, he does his, David does his printmaking here, all this is in his home studio yeah. in, in San Francisco, um, but he's prolific though, he's always bringing, you know, every week or so, he's got a stack of prints that we keep That's our fun. doors full. Yeah, I like printmaking, it's fun. But they're not strict editions or anything like that, right. it's not like one of 20. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have the patience to actually like, because it, I mean, that requires a lot to like, be like, yeah. you know, getting everything lined yeah, up fun. and making sure everything's like the same. I kind of like the idea of accidents and stuff mm -hmm. being messed up too, which is... Yeah. So you're overlaying your, your hand on the images of the people. Yeah. You're a painter, right? Uh, yeah, I don't paint very much anymore, but yeah, I was trained as a painter, yeah. yeah. The first struck me was a just really gorgeous pencil work. Right. And, and the pencil stuff has just been like, I feel like I've got a little better over the last like 10 years or something, just because the more you practice, it's like anything, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And, um, and that's one of the ones I was saying earlier about how it can be frustrating sometimes, because I tend to go, like, go down that rabbit hole where I just keep working something over and over again until I'm really happy with it. And that can, sometimes I'm just like, well, just leave it and be done with it. And I kind of wish I could do something faster and just be, right, we're done, but then, I get that's that's really why I do it because I get so much pleasure out of doing those drawings. So yeah. Um, you do your work on paper and then mount it on board. Yeah, yeah. And so the background paper obviously a huge part of your work. 
Right. Um, but it seems so beautifully aged and drawn. Is it all found? Or? Yeah, it mostly is. I've just got like drawers and drawers of old books and journals and stuff like that and old notebooks. Yeah, totally. People and now people give it to me. Like people uh, go, they've got a locker by there and people like stick old things in here like, Oh brilliant, this is great. So it's yeah, now, now it kinda of finds me too, which is great. Yeah. But I've, yeah. I just like I mean I like the look of it, the kind of pattern of stuff and it's just yeah. Yeah. Interesting. The um okay, so do you feel better after making a piece of art? <laughs> yeah, no yeah. definitely, yeah. yeah. For sure. some off. Off yeah, you totally get something off your chest yeah. when you're doing it. Yeah, it feels really good to get that stuff. Right. I mean, even and sometimes you know you're not you're never always happy with what you've done, but uh, it's it's just like yeah, it's out there, it's gone. So sure. yeah, move it's on. definitely move on to the next challenge. Yeah, in life. yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it definitely makes me. Feel, I mean, that's kind of why I do it because it makes me feel better. Yeah, <laughs> it's obviously going mental. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. yeah no. That's so okay, Jason. Generally, no. I mean, when I had the, I'll, so I'll work on like like these ones and the one in the back, the big one. So I'll have those bigger ones going, and I'll be working on those like over a long period of time. But then these ones, generally, I'll start it and finish it, and then move on to the next one. So like every day, I'll kind of just come Yeah, just like I'll start, I'll, I'll start with, with an idea or a picture or whatever, and I'll work that one until it's done. I find it hard to like leave it. Yeah, I get frustrated if it doesn't, like I can't just, I mean I have done ones which are just like, I get so sick of them, I'll just leave it and then go back to it like two weeks later or whatever, but generally I want to keep it, get it done until I'm happy with it. What's your work practice like, like as far as your routine, when do you work on them? Well, well I don't work Friday, so mostly I work Fridays. on Fridays on it. Yeah. And then in the evening, I'm actually, I like working in the evenings, uh -huh. except I find it really hard to get the motivation to. Sure. Get off, my, get off my butt and go down to and do it. But once yeah. I do it, I like I, I work better in the evening. Actually, right? it's, there's something about that kind of in the evening atmosphere when it's like dark and I can just like focus on stuff and listen to music and just do something, which is good. But yeah. The um, yeah, go ahead. John. I was gonna say um, this is probably getting off the materials thing and more into um, concept um, or motivation. But the fact that you are a transplant from Scotland right. to here, I feel like your humor is, you're observing sort of American ideas or promises that are fall short in a lot of ways, and that could be your sort of Scottish cynicism maybe. But um, yeah. how long, two-part question, one is, how much does one play off the other? And the second comment is, how long have you been in the US? Okay, we will do that one first, <laughs> it's easier. I've been here like 24 years, 24? Yeah, 24 years, pretty much exactly. Yeah. So, Mostly California? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, we moved straight to San Francisco and we've been, we haven't gone anywhere else. <laughs> so 24 years, and yes, definitely, um, it's definitely like the filter of coming here and being coming from somewhere where people don't have those same expectations and those same, I mean, there's a different, I think there's a different idea. We're just talking about the big ones, kind of about happiness and that sort of stuff. And I think there's definitely a different idea of, what people expect from life and a level of happiness that people expect other places mm -hmm. and coming here and it's funny because there's like the sort of dichotomy of people being like expecting they're very optimistic and they're very like well this is great but there's also a kind of like underlying disappointment and anger that's that's really apparent i think yeah. and it's and i think those two things are related to each other like that that intense like ex expectation of happiness oh. and sure. The fact that that doesn't come through, then people get really like bummed out. And I think this is funny because I think people elsewhere tend to be more like happiness, is weird, but like more content with where they are and maybe are make do with stuff. But that, but they still find a happiness in that kind of making do. Whereas here, people tend to be always looking for the next thing that's going to make them happier than they are right now. So yeah, it's really present. Yeah, and it's, right. it's amazing. It's just mm -hmm. it's the ultimate commentary. It could be, and I, I feel like, just to me, it requires somebody who has an outside perspective coming in. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you, you have such a, like an amazing understanding of like a, a sort of American culture and all of the fallibilities. Right. 
So, I mean, that's and that makes it funny. I mean, we're just we're right. laughing ourselves because otherwise we're going to be right. angry all the time. And I think the Scottish <laughs> sense of humour is very <laughs> self-depreciating too. And I think that that when you translate mm -hmm. that into an American culture, because American American humour tends to not be very self-depreciating. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's funny, but it's funny in a different way. And I think when you juxtapose that, it, there is that kind of like. I use the word we a lot rather than I or you. And I think that, that that idea of like we're all in this and if we can acknowledge that things aren't always as brilliant as we pretend that they are, I think that is like part of the what I'm trying to get through to. It's not like, I don't want to be like poking my finger and going like everything in America is shit because I don't believe it, but it's like the idea of like we're here and maybe we can acknowledge that everything isn't quite as brilliant as we pretend it is all the time. That's kind of like what, yeah. That's good. Right. Did that make sense? Yeah, of course. So, so am I projecting my apathy into these works, or is it coming in the other direction? Well? You're projecting what? Your apathy. Because I, I, I see apathy. Apathy? Apathetic. Oh, really? Cynicism. But cynicism, I don't think of cynicism as being apathetic. I, 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 I just think of it as more like a realism, a, a kind of realistic way of, like, it's almost like you're looking at things and saying, like, this isn't, what I'm being told that it is, I'm looking at this and seeing that it's something else. That doesn't mean that you need to be just give up. It's like you know, I, I see what it is, and I'm going to work with it. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, it's not too apathetic, pessimistic. It's you. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it shows the importance of um, getting outside culture in our right. Yeah. Our bubble. Yeah. Our bubble, man. Right. right? Yeah. Especially with artists. You right. Get that perspective. But you can put that anywhere. I would say the same thing. People, people in Scotland are, you know, you need sure. somebody else's perspective yeah, right. to From totally the to help you see how things are. Because yeah. it's very easy to just be like, mm, here right. we are. This is how it is. And yeah. So but yeah, so definitely. advice for Americans as a whole? Should we just chill out? Just keep going. Just chill out. Just keep going. You're the best in Scottish ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's. So I mentioned briefly the um, your voice. You know, we're kind of right. your commentary comes through different characters. And right. I don't know. Would you like to comment on that? I think it's kind of interesting. What do you mean? By well, I mean the. Uh, it's not you. This isn't David Fuller right. writing this. It's, right. Is it third person? Is it, yeah. Is it I mean, it's like a, it's, it's not necessarily yeah. the characters in the piece. It kind of is. Yeah, I guess it kind of <laughs> Well, some of them are more like, I don't know, it's like that whole, was that, what do you call that God persona where you're yeah. like looking at something and you just create that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that. I mean, it's, and it is kind of my voice, but it's not really my voice. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm, I, I definitely have a tone that I, and I sort of, when I write, when I'm writing stuff down, I get to a point where I'm like, okay, this has got the tone that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And it is more like a kind of, I mean, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't really understand poetry very much, but it is that kind of idea of like, it just sounds right, it's a yeah. right tone of something, and you're just like, that's what it is. You ever write poetry? No. I, I, I'm baffled by poetry. I mean, it's this kind of poetry. Right, yeah. but it's just, I don't know, I have a hard time with that. Yeah. Uh, do you ever get writer's block? Or artist yeah, block? Yeah, yeah. I like, yeah, like I said, after that last show, mm -hmm. you get to that point. And also, sometimes you just like question, is this, am I just, is this a complete waste of my time doing all this? I mean, it is. I mean, it's like, what are yeah. you doing? It's, sure. it's kind of stupid. Making more stuff. Right. So there is that. Yeah, but I mean, generally, I just really love doing it, so I'm not going to stop. So, you know, I mean, I, I, that's what makes me happy is sitting and drawing stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's that physical act of like, your way of processing. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's like a sort of meditative thing, uh -huh. and it's just I enjoy drawing and I enjoy putting it together and uh -huh. and getting stuff off your chest. Nice. Anybody have any thoughts? If questions, flies. Questions. Do you ever put people that you know into the artworks, or only <laughs> found people from whatever sources? Yeah, like? they're pretty much only found people. I, yeah. I haven't really done any. I have done. I've done one for a friend once in Scotland. I put him in, and it, but that was it was kind of just like a joke, really. It wasn't. I wasn't really. I was just making fun of him, really. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't. You know. What, I, I think the anonymity is part of how you can make that commentary because it's like, if it once it becomes a specific person, like the Donald Trump thing, it it brings a whole new thing to because it's like you read that image as you know who that is, so then everybody brings their own associations of who that person is to the work and then it changes 
it kind of narrows the meaning of everything once you know who the person is. And I don't, I'd rather people didn't know who they were and they just make up their own minds based on what they look like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't Ted Cruz. No, it wasn't Ted Cruz. No, it definitely wasn't Ted Cruz. <laughs> he was like some guy from an old National Geographic or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't Ted Cruz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was possessed by Ted Cruz. Yeah, with your compositions, do you make like small commitments to how you want it to be and build it up, or does it all kind of float together at the last minute? Uh, small commitments is a good phrase. <laughs> yeah, I think there are some small commitments. Like, I'll have an idea sometimes before I start. Like, I'll place this image here and I'll place that there. But very often, once you try that, it doesn't really work out like you expected in your head. So, yeah, there are small commitments, but very often they end up not being how the finished piece works out. Yeah. It's the title of your next show. Small commitments. I like that, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. That was a yeah. yeah. That's a nice one. Nice. Free <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice. Cool. Uh, so we have um, awkward questions written down mm -hmm. by our um, mm -hmm. folks that came in the gallery. Also, some people commented online. I even got a okay. phone call uh, really? at about 12.30 today from someone who, who, I guess she saw the post. But didn't she call in? Okay. Well, there you go. Amazing. That yeah. must be a good question. Yeah. So why don't I read through these? Okay. You don't have to answer if you don't okay. want to. Well, I haven't fine. screened through these. I have no idea what they're okay. saying. Um, question: Did you turn in your homework with drawings in the margins? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I definitely had. Uh, I drew all over stuff at school. I just doodled on everything. Yeah, cool. totally. I would spend a lot of time peaching, drawing things rather than writing things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a good artist. Exactly. Um, question number two: In what ways do you reject being a quote model citizen, or do? You? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's that mean? I am a model citizen. I'm just reading it. I, I, no, <laughs> there's no name. Um, you are a model. citizen. I am a model citizen. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with that? It's only been <laughs> yeah, um, I kind of know what they mean. I don't know. I, it's not about being a model citizen. It's about yeah. thinking about things and not and questioning things. I think sure. that's what it's about. Yeah, I guess you're questioning. Yeah, things. it's about questioning. David, in other words, you're kind of punk rock. Pun, I am punk rock. I'm so punk rock. You were skating in Scotland, right? <laughs> I guess I was. Yeah, right? in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. Skateboarding in Skyland in the 70s. Yeah. That's punk rock. Okay, here's another question. Oh, there's right. three questions. On this oh question. God. Okay. Sorry. What do you wish people would ask you? What do you wish? People would ask you? <laughs> I wish people wouldn't ask me anything. I know. Like, that would be perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, question number two. Yeah. Do you have a favorite in this show? I guess Ooh. a piece of art. Ooh. I don't know. Maybe the big one. I kind of like the big one a lot, just because. It's, I know what went into it, and yeah. I can always look. I, there's something about having so much on there that <laughs> sounds stupid, but you can always find something that you like in it. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you forget which little bits are there, and you're like, oh, I remember doing that, that was really good. So I like that one, I think it's probably. And then there's some of them. Ah, that's, that's the one, probably. Okay. Cool, yeah. good to know. Yeah. Uh, question number three uh -oh. Can you mention a couple artists that have been an influence on your work? <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, obviously the text thing, like people like Raymond Pettibon, and um, I like the way that he uses text. Who's that? Raymond Pettibon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Basquiat, uh, Rauschenberg, the way that he puts stuff together, you know, that uh, all. And I love the way that Cy Twombly makes marks. I love that whole, like, mm -hmm. the mark making thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. David Shrigley, his sure. sense of humor and just the use of it, the way he uses text. So, yeah. Yeah. How did you catch the first name? Uh, Raymond Pettibon. Raymond Pettibon. He's like uh, he does all the black and white ink stuff, and he uses text on it. He's been around. He's, he used to do stuff for Black. He used to do the covers for Black Flag. You know the punk band Black Flag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. He's done. He's been around for a long time. He's, his stuff's really interesting. His his text is much more lyrical and poetic than mine is. But he does also use humor. And, Okay, here's another set of questions. All right. Are the drawings in your collage your drawings? 
Yes. Yes, do. I might try. <laughs> you didn't just. I didn't pay anyone, anyone else to do that. You don't do it. Photoshop filter. Yeah, I have. I used. I've used my kids' drawings um, before. Like, and there might be some of the ones on that, on the big one that aren't. There might be like yeah. bits and pieces that I found. Yeah. So there, I, I have occasionally found stuff and stuck it on things. So you can draw. I can draw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the source of your collage material? We can talk to us. Yeah, I mean, it's just I've got like. Drawers full of stuff and obviously rest these play, things. And yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you hate the most about being an artist? <laughs> um, mm. the, probably the conceit of being an artist. Like the mm. idea that you're just something special. And I hate that whole idea that you're like, that just that selfishness of yeah. thinking that you can sit down and do something that is like, but you kind of got to do it. You got to try. Yeah. But there's, there is that kind of like, there's that. I, I, I'm a bit uncomfortable with that idea. I, like for years, I hated the idea of calling myself an artist. Mm -hmm. I'd rather call myself a painter or, 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 or did they, I, that, there's that kind of like yeah, pompousness of like, oh, I'm an artist. Yeah, that, and just the whole conceit of like, why do you think you're special that you can do that stuff? But, but, you, but you kind of have to believe that or you're not gonna do it. So, I mean, you do it because you love doing it. But there is an aspect of it which makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Keeps that would be, yeah. yeah. Cool. That's right. Good. That would probably be yes. most of it I like. That's good. Keeps you grounded. And yeah. A, a nice I mean, I think it can be a negative thing too. Yeah. It can stop you from, it can stop you from like pushing yourself harder to be like more, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like it. It's it. You know those oh, bars? Oh, those yeah, are great, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ice cream sandwich? Yeah, maybe vanilla. That's it. Oh, <laughs> here we go. What artist do you think is totally overrated? There's one. Uh, uh, yeah, I could have hate that sort of question. I don't know. I mean, it's like art is so subjective. Yeah. And what you think, I don't know. I mean, there's art which I find, which I know is like people love and I have a hard time getting anything out of. So you think it's overrated? <laughs> I, I mean, is it overrated? I don't know. It's yeah. like, is it overrated just because I don't like yeah, it? It's, sure it's just it a personal thing. Like, I, yeah, there's art I look at and like, but is that just my feeling because I don't get it? Uh -huh. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think people should do, art should be everything. Is what it is. It shouldn't be like just stuff that I like. It should be whatever. So it's good. Yeah. Amen. What's your favorite color? And yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I do hate Banksy, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. There you go. I mean, I was thinking What's that? I know. Yeah. I'm just terrified yeah. of that, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your favorite color and why? I, uh, I don't know. That's a weird one. I mean, probably graphite. <laughs> like, seriously? That's like probably my favorite color. Like, in, 4B pencil is the favorite color. Yeah. Oh, this is just. Because that's what I work with. funny right now. How, how young were you when you experienced your first brain injury and why? <laughs> oh. I don't know who wrote it. Oh. No that's not a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably some of that. Yeah. Uh, this was a, the call in from Seattle. Oh, okay. I'd uh, love to know this the history of the piece, The Sinister Osteopath. Is the image specific to a particular person asking for a friend? Okay. That piece right. Yeah. Sinister osteopath. The image is um, actually a, it's a mugshot. Yes. It That's is why it's like that. Yeah. Wow. It's a really old mugshot, probably from the thirties or forties. So it's like a really old one. Wow. Um, and the osteopath thing is, I I used to see an osteopath, and I'm totally down with osteopathy. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I used to see an osteopath in Glasgow. I had a really bad back, and he completely fixed, fixed my back, which was great. And then when I moved here, I found cause there were hardly any osteopaths over here because everyone's a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. So I found an osteopath in, in Berkeley who was fantastic, and then she left. But yeah, I, I like osteopaths. But this was just, I don't know, it's the idea of like, if you're so suspicious of everything, like, yeah. why would you care? Like, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's behind there wanting to fix my sore back. You know, I mean, it's, that was it's a lot of people resonated joke. with that. I, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. bad people with back problems. I don't right. know. The woman on the phone, she called and she said, "Wow, there are more of those available. Like, There's only one." She's like, <laughs> "You should make prints of them. Yes. We'd sell tons of them." Yeah, you mentioned that as well. Right. A book. Oh right. So there we go. Yeah. 
This is a question via Instagram. Uh -oh. uh, did you have a beard back in the day or just making up for lost time? <laughs> <laughs> making up for lost time. I don't know if I have a beard. I different our facial hair arrangements over the years. Yeah, but this one's definitely beard. making up for lost time. Last year or so. You guys tired of this yet? I got a few more. Yeah, we'll, we'll make There's another fast. via Instagram. Um, who do you use as inspiration for the people you choose no, to feature no. in the pieces, and do they have any clue what they're getting themselves no, into? No, they don't have any clue. Okay. Oh, this was uh, another Instagram one. David, what does a cow say? <laughs> no. uh, what kind of sick and twisted family do you come from? <laughs> well, that's the last one. <laughs> okay, I come from a Scottish family, so I mean, that's why exactly. that sort of explains something. I don't know, my family is incredibly normal and boring. Normal and boring? Yeah, really. They seem like nice folks. They're nice I folks, yeah, them. they're yeah. nice folks. They're fine. Cool. But they, I don't think that's why I ended up no. being sick and twisted. Not Maybe. Sick and twisted. <laughs> Anybody have any other comments or thoughts? Yes, have you thought uh -huh. about a book? I have to often yes. thought about a book, yeah. But I just, same thing with sending stuff to New Yorker. I just never do. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get. The book, each show is kind of its own nice little grouping that would make a really good book. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the first show we had with you was the Apology series. Right. Wonderful. Which needs to be a book, for sure. Yeah. And then that was slightly different because that actually was like a theme show. Mm -hmm. And it was yeah, like, yeah. So. The one that snickered. Right, and I kind of did that because I was again I was kind of stuck, mm -hmm. and I was like a way out of because I just made everything an apology. But yeah, no, out a book would be good. Yes. So on, on the question, uh -huh. do you keep images of everything? You've yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, to me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're here. Make yourself at home, you guys. Hang out, check some more art out, eat the